Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning my loves, welcome back. Here we are ready to kick off the middle of the month love reading for all zodiac signs. So let's begin. If you guys are interested in any of the services that we provide, go ahead and hit the description box below. You'll be able to find all of our links on there. If you guys are interested in any personal readings or any type of spell work, you can find all of that on there. I also want to encourage you guys to follow us on all our other social media platforms as I stay connected on there as well. All right, let's get to the nitty gritty. Let's see what's going on with all my lovely signs let's see what you can expect for the remainder of the month in regards to love and romance let's begin here we call upon all our wise and loving spirit guides spirits of light and love ascended master spirits of divination please step forward allow me to see here since you don't receive the messages loud and clearly please speak to me truth and only truth we're going to begin here with leo as it is still leo season for those of you guys that are or have experienced a birthday brightest of blessings my loves all right let's see what's going on here for all the zodiac signs we're going to begin with leo sun moon rising venus right guys what are the messages for leos leo sun moon rising venus if you guys are new to my channel don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up all right Spirit guides, ancestors, please speak to us. Allow us to see clearly and concisely what is unfolding for Leo. It's been a very long day. How are you guys doing? We are doing these readings as usual. <laughs> Super late in the AM. All right. Leo, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Let's see what's going on. Give us three cards for new love, three cards for old flame, for Leo, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Three cards for new love, three cards for old flame, for Leo, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Struggling here to shuffle. All right, let's see what's going on with my lovely Leos. All right, here we go, Leo. Let's see what's going on. Let me put that, okay. All right, what are the messages here that we have for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Give us three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. All right, here we go, Leo. Let's see what's going on with you guys. All right, to Leo, we have the first card that popped out, which is the Ten of Pentacles in regards to how they see you. In regards to how they feel about you, Nine of Wands and the Three of Pentacles in reverse. Okay, so what I'm seeing here for a lot of you guys that are dealing with new love, I feel like you guys are definitely on two di different wavelengths. Um, when we talk about how they're seeing you, the Ten of Pentacles in reverse is realizing that they're not ready for the type of commitment so perhaps they see you as a person that is wanting commitment or that is looking for something long term if you recently experienced like not much communication there or like they kind of been pulling away the reason for this is because they are in fact feeling or understanding that you're wanting a higher level of commitment with the nine of wands here in regards to how they feel this is a person that is still trying to get over some type of experience that they had in the past. Um, you could be dealing with a person that um, perhaps is coming out of a relationship or perhaps is still working on healing um, that aspect, you know, where it could be a person that's been, you know, separated or broken up from their previous partner a year, two years. It doesn't mean that they are healed. Nine of Wands always indicates, you know, it's the wounded healer. Um, what does that mean? The wounded healer is a person that is 
damaged. Someone that hasn't or feels like they're damaged and they haven't completely put their pieces together or their heart together. Uh, this is a person that's really struggling to open up at the moment. Um, with the Three of Pentacles in reverse, they're not really in regards to their future actions. I don't see them coming towards you or trying to fix or, like I said, get on the same wavelength. I feel like this person is doing you a favor, Leo, because this person is realizing, you know what, Leo is, you know, the end all be all. But I know that I'm not capable of giving to Leo what they're wanting. So it's almost as if before you be the one to initiate the end or the conclusion of this connection, they're choosing to walk away and not want to put no more effort towards this connection. Okay, Leo? So my advice in regards to this is keep it pushing, my loves. Now, when it comes to your old flame, we have the page of pentacles here, seven of pentacles and the empress. Yeah, so the person from the past, Leo, is still wanting to come back around. I feel like they're struggling um, in regards to how to open up or how to come towards you. Uh, but they are, you're definitely heavy on their mind. And there is um, future communication that I see happening here for some of you guys could be uh, the the last week of August where they actually make the move, where they actually do contact you. But this person from your past or the ex flame is definitely not over you. They are definitely very much thinking about, you know, what they lost really <laughs> with the seven of pentacles and the empress. It is the understanding that, yeah, I really did fuck up. I need to step up. I need to do what I have to do um, to not lose Leo. So, in regards to this old person or this old flame, I should say, uh, this person is definitely wanting to come back around for a second shot at you guys, Leo. All right, my loves, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Virgo, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what Virgo can expect, what is coming towards them in regards to love and romance. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame, for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Three cards for old, or sorry, three cards for new love, three cards for old flame, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Virgos, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. You guys definitely stay tuned as we do have spell videos going up for you guys like i said i'm gonna try to stick to friday i know i said that last reading <laughs> and this friday was just or this past friday was just excruciating honestly i went till almost six in the morning doing spell work for clients so um i just didn't have time to upload but i'm gonna try to stick to the schedule of uploading spell videos for you guys every friday and then the rest of the week is going to be tarot readings, okay? So hopefully we can um, stick to that. <laughs> All right. Let's see what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Virgo, if you guys are interested in personal readings, you can find all of that on the description box below. Our contact, our socials. Let's see what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, one more shuffle. Here we go, Virgo. Let's see what's going on with you guys. Three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. All right, we have the strength card, we have the world card, and we have the sun card. Wow, powerful energy here, you guys. So initially, I feel like you could have been dealing with someone that was looking for something casual, Virgo, or perhaps you were the one that was looking for something casual, not necessarily uh, looking towards the future. You were more like living in the moment, um, or this could have been the, the person that you were dealing with. Um, you could have also been dealing with someone that was a bit selfish. Um, they could have even given you the vibes, like they could have attracted you because they were so confident. But I, I wanna say it wasn't so much the confidence. I feel like this person, or you were dealing with the person that was a bit arrogant. However, their perspective has changed in regards to this connection. With the world card and the sun card, I feel like this person is really finding out that you guys do have a lot of things in common or that you are, in fact, the person that they've been looking for when it comes to love and romance. Um, 
there is definitely a desire here to continue pursuing the relationship or the connection and i do see it unfolding for some of you guys especially those of you guys that are not official i do see um getting to the point of making it official and actually creating a stable relationship even if it started off casual or it started off as something that was not necessarily that serious i feel like there is almost this trend this this transmutation of the energy where they wanted to put you in a category or this could be you it could be vice versa where you put them in a category and then the more you spend time with them the more you realize or get to know them on a deeper level the quickly you're starting to realize or the quickly or the quicker they're starting to realize that you are in fact what they've been looking for when it comes to relationships when it comes to their partner or the person that they're looking for when it comes to relationships so i do see it progressing into something much more stable for you virgo now i do want to mention for those of you guys that are single okay specifically they're telling me virgo rising and virgo venus um those of you guys that are single out there i do see that around leo season or by the end of this month, there's going to be a connection that unfolds. Someone's coming into your life, and this is someone that is completely different from what you're accustomed to. Um, this could be a person that is from a different country. It could be a person that is from a different uh, lifestyle, very, very different from what you're used to. But the connection is going to be inevitable. You're going to know exactly who they're speaking about because this energy is going to feel very much like you guys are going to be drawn towards each other's um, like magnets. Um, and again, uh, specifically for Virgo rising and Virgo Venus, okay? All right, moving on. Let's see, in regards to Old Flame, we have the Six of Pentacles, the High Priestess, and the Justice. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, Virgo. So the person understands that they were the ones that perhaps didn't step up or perhaps they were the ones that expected you to do the most in the relationship. They're realizing that now. Now, in regards to why they feel this way, they've really been internalizing or they really have been going through this energy of almost internalizing um, everything that happened or everything that unfolded in this connection. I do see them looking at you and it could be through private accounts or through fake accounts. Uh, for others of you, this could be the person actually passing by your house trying to be um, sneaky about it, but I feel like they're keeping a very close eye on you, uh, Virgo. Now with the justice card in regards to their future actions, I feel like right now there's still a lot of internalizing that's happening. However, because the Six of Pentacles is here, I do feel like they will be reaching out and they will be trying to come towards you to try to clarify certain things or to try to mend the fences with you. But I feel like it's not so much about mending. It has more to do with wanting to see if you would be open to reconciliating with them. Okay. All right, my loves, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Libra. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Libras in regards to love and romance. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Okay, Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oh, and you guys can definitely expect the new podcast episode is coming through for you guys. Um sometime probably uh probably saturday or sunday i'm gonna try to stick to sundays for the podcast um i did a i did a poll on my instagram and on my snapchat of you guys letting me know who the worst <laughs> zodiac signs were um that you dated and very interesting it was very entertaining and very fun and I'm definitely going to be talking about that in that podcast, okay, on that episode. And the reason why I did that was because I actually did do, I actually did do a, uh, think of it as I took one for the team. <laughs> uh, what I mean by that is the episode's going to be called, I dated all Zodiac signs so you won't have to, and I'm going to be in speaking about my experiences and what it was to date every single one of the zodiac signs and my opinions on it 
as well as I will be sharing with you guys what people were telling me on my Instagram and Snapchat. So you guys definitely stay tuned for that, okay? All right, let's get to the nitty gritty. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Let's see what's going on with Libras. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Like I said, if you guys don't follow me on other social medias, I definitely encourage you guys to do so, especially Snapchat. I'm very proactive on there. You guys can see things behind the scenes as well as things that are happening in my everyday life that people have a tendency of finding that very entertaining um, as well as I always post when you guys reply to my stories. I always repost it so that you guys can see uh, that I'm basically giving you a shout out. So, all right. So Libra, we have the five of cups, the magician and the hierophant in regards to how they see you. The five of cups here indicates to me that there could have been some type of miscommunication or misunderstanding. What I'm hearing for some of you guys is a feeling of a missed opportunity. So it could be that recently you guys could have had some type of fallen out. For others of you, it could be that you guys are not communicating the way you would want. Now, keep in mind, we do have Mercury in retrograde, and I'm seeing this for a lot of couples right now. There is a lot of you know, people trying to communicate certain things, but just doesn't come out right. <laughs> so there's a lot of misunderstandings. However, the positive in this, and this is for those of you Libras that are dealing with new people. We have the magician here and the high, the hierophant. So how they feel about you, the magician, is they definitely have feelings for you. Obviously, this is why there is a feeling of like a missed opportunity or there is a feeling of missing you or wanting to fix whatever whatever conflict has been going on. Um, now, in regards to how they feel about you with the magician, I feel like they're still wanting to pursue this connection. They still have hope and desire to see, you know, if you guys can work through it and to build a stronger or more solid foundation. For others of you, it could be that initially the connection was very strong, but you felt like they weren't being completely honest or transparent. The moment you started to feel a bit uncertain, Libra, for some of you guys, you could have started pulling away. And that's where it created this energy here with the Five of Cups. Um, and again, it's, it's miscommunication. A lot of people fearing communicating or openly communicating because everyone's overanalyzing right now. Um, and the more you overthink, you kind of psych yourself out and then you hold back and all of that drama is happening right now. So again, with the Magician... They still have high hopes in regards to this connection with the Hierophant. I do see it unfolding into something much more solid or being at least being able to be on the same page. Um, give it a few weeks. I do see it, you know, getting better or I do see them actually being proactive in regards to trying to fix this connection um, probably by the third week of August. OK, so uh, again, I feel like it's just a little bump on the road that you guys are currently dealing with um keep in mind if it is you uh libra that you felt very uncertain and it kind of scared you and you started to pull away try the best you can to be more receptive when they do reach out um and what i mean by receptive is don't be so short and to the point because i feel like the reason they reach out is because they're wanting to fix this however they are also fearing rejection so if they feel like you're not as in it, um, that might scare them a bit and then, you know, completely pull back. So if you are wanting to fix this, my advice is when they do reach out, be more receptive to that. Now, in regards to your old flame Libra, we have the six of cups, the three of cups here and the page of swords. So I see this person watching you, Libra. I see them looking at your socials. I see them really being triggered, especially if you've been a little bit more proactive in socializing or going out there with friends and just having a good time. This is really making them miss you. And the fucked up part about it is that what I'm seeing is they knew what they had when they had you. They just thought that you would keep either continuing putting up with their BS or like you wouldn't have it in you to actually walk away. The moment you walked away, it's almost like you're finding your footing again or you're finding your grounding again. You're starting to enjoy life or you're starting to 
uh, like I said, be more social and that's what's really triggering them. So it's almost as if they felt like you were going to sit there on the sidelines and wait for them to take some type of action towards you. Obviously that didn't happen and I do see them coming quickly back around. But the reason for this is because they see that either you have options or that you are having a good time. Now, if you are wanting this person back into your life, Libra, but you've been a little bit, you know, um, not that social, try to be proactive on your social medias because this person is watching you. And the more proactive you are, I feel like it's going to be quicker for them to come back around. So just an insider, if you're trying to bring or lure this person back, um, yeah, be more proactive on social media and show them what a good time you're having. They're quickly going to be triggered and come back to me. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my Scorpios. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is going on with Scorpio? Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards for new love. Three cards for old flame. Libra, Sun, I'm sorry, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. For some of you Scorpios, you're dealing with Libra. Let's see what's going on here. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right. Let's see what's going on with my Scorpios. All right, yeah, the Queen of Wands, the Empress. Ooh, someone's being stubborn. Three of Swords, okay. So what I'm seeing here is, Scorpio, I feel like you could have been dealing with someone that was extremely arrogant or someone that was very full of themselves and it's almost like they assumed that you would be the chaser. Little did they know, right, Scorpio? Um, and I feel like for some of you guys, you could have like, ignored certain red flags about this person but then you quickly realize that they were either full of shit or that this person is just trying to play mind games and the moment you stepped into your empress energy whether you're male or female doesn't matter we're talking about energies the moment you realized or you told yourself you know what i know what the fuck i deserve and i'm not going to be settling for any little breadcrumbs right from this person the moment you did that, it's almost like it hurt their ego and it hurt their pride. And there is a desire to want to come back around. However, this person is really much in their feels right now. And I feel that it's because you have done something that not many have done, which has made them like have to check themselves or almost make them feel like, no, honey, you're not the prize. I'm the prize. So again, I feel like, and you could have, for some of you guys, you could have been dealing with someone that was very much like not grounded, very much shadow side. So it could have been a person that was not just arrogant, could have been a person that was like multiple dating or dealing with multiple people. We do have the three of swords here, but I feel like in regards to their future actions with the three of swords, they're in their feels right now, Scorpio, because they weren't expecting for you to know your self-worth. Now, for some of you guys, you could be dealing with the person that is a narcissist um, or could have been a narcissist at some point in their life. And it's almost like they feel like they could do or treat people however they want because people have a tendency of putting up with that. You didn't and that shook them. Now, this is not to say that this is a positive thing because it's one thing when life teaches us like we have to evolve we have to grow but i feel like the reason why this person is wanting to grow has more to do with the fact that you humbled them um and it's not like they're internalizing and being like yeah i want to be a better person no it's almost like i need to prove to myself that i can get scorpio back that I can get, right, that I can get this Empress. No matter how hard she tries or no matter how hard he tries to teach me a lesson, I can get them back. So my advice is if you're dealing with this energy, Scorpio, walk away from that, honestly. Um, it's just petty energy. 
All right, moving on here in regards to your old flame. We have the Eight of Cups. This person is dealing with the consequences of their actions, Scorpio. I do see them coming back around and trying to contact you. That's if they haven't already. But I feel like you taught them a lesson by walking away, as usually Scorpios do. Um, for good or bad, when you go into someone's life, the moment you walk out of their life, it's like a massive transformation that happens in that person's life. Um, that's something that Scorpios, you know, that's in your nature, whether you're aware of it or not. But what I'm seeing here is this person is definitely dealing or has been dealing with the consequences of their own actions. And it's almost like they're reflecting and realizing that you were in fact a good thing or the best thing that has happened to them. So I see them coming back around wanting to do good by you, Scorpio. So it is not like this, okay? We're not, this is the new love, the new people you were dealing with. This is a, an ex or an old flame or someone that came to an end, you, you know, if you are still wanting them to come back into your life, I do see them reaching out. I do see them wanting to bring balance into this connection and wanting to heal from it. Um, so I do feel that their intentions are true um, because like I said, it was a reflection. It was a lesson that they had to learn and I feel like they're willing and wanting to put in the work to make it work. Okay, Scorpio, so the ball is going to be in your court, my loves. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Sagis. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards for new love. Three cards for old flame. Let's see what's going on with my Sagis. If you guys like these videos, like, share, and comment, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius. Ooh, I just seen the Death card and the Two of Wands. All right. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Let's see what's going on with my Sagis. Oh, you got cards flying out. Okay. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What's going on with them? Spirits, give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, here we go, Sagis. All right, Sagittarius, here we go. We have the Lover's card, Five of Pentacles in reverse, and the Nine of Pentacles in reverse. Okay, so... I feel that this new person or this new connection that you're dealing with is almost like you guys are both mirroring each other. What I mean by this is for some of you guys, this could in fact be a soulmate connection. Now, there is almost like, it's almost like you guys are being triggered and you're not aware that their triggering is triggering them as well because both of you guys are being forced to evolve. The reason I say that is with the five of pentacles in reverse, it's almost like realizing that it's almost like realizing that whatever whatever you were missing in previous relationships, whatever wasn't whatever you were Putting up with, I should say, in relationships is definitely not something you should be putting up with anymore. So it's realizing your worth. With the Nine of Pentacles in reverse, you're still questioning that though. And I feel like you guys are both mirroring that. So what I mean by that is you could potentially be getting offended about certain ways or certain ways that they treat you or how they communicate with you and you're vocal about it and then they get offended because they're like you're overthinking or you're over analyzing or I didn't mean it like that but then when you tell them something that is or I should say when they tell you certain things 
that they don't like about how you're approaching this relationship or this connection. It's almost like they don't want to hear it too. And they kind of turn it around and make it seem like you're the one that's being difficult. Um, but the reason for this is because both of you guys are being pushed to grow. Both of you guys are being pushed to work on your self-worth and to work on letting go of past experiences and not allowing that to affect your present relationships. For some of you guys, you guys are literally purposely hindering or jeopardizing the connection because you feel like you don't deserve this connection or this person, or they could be doing the same thing to you. So both of you guys are being pushed to step up to evolve, to grow, to understand you guys' toxic traits that you guys have been doing in past relationships that have clearly been affecting you guys' love life. For some of you guys, I'm going to be completely honest. If this is a, a new person, it's almost like they're testing you to see if you've learned from the past and if you're willing to choose yourself. If they're not meeting you halfway or if they're not bringing to you what you expect from a partner, it's it's almost like the universe is kind of throwing you a curveball before it brings you the person that's for you. Are you going to choose yourself or are you going to continue pretending you don't see the red flags even though you've been through this walk in the park a few times? Okay, so be mindful of that, you guys. Um, now, for... Very little of you, I am seeing that there is a soulmate connection and this person is in fact reflecting a lot of the things that are triggering you about them is what you trigger in other people. So it's almost like learn to take self-criticism. Um, it, it, it's constructive criticism. Thank you. It's constructive. Learn to take constructive criticism. If someone gives you an advice, don't take it so personal that you get so offended because sometimes they're doing you a solid and they are telling you, hey, Sagittarius, like you are fucking toxic or you do have a very toxic mentality or you do have a habit of like jumping to conclusions without realizing that you're in essence kind of taking my, you know, opportunity to try to clarify things for you and you already went down this rabbit hole and, you know, totally went psycho <laughs> uh, and judged them for things that they weren't doing and it just so happened that they couldn't get to your text because they were busy or something. You know what I mean? So again, for some of you guys, it's about, for all of you, it's about growing and understanding your toxic behaviors. But for others of you, it is understanding that this triggering that's happening, this mirroring that's happening is for your soul evolution, for your soul growth and to be able to experience a happy, balanced relationship. All right, heavy energy there, Sagittarius. All right, in regards to the old lover or person from your past, yeah, this person has definitely not learned their lesson. This is a person that continues to kind of put shit in the back burner and, and have a tendency for some of you guys, you're dealing with an ex that probably goes around telling people that you were the one that messed up or you were the one that, you know, ruined the relationship. And it's so much because they don't take self-accountability. They don't take self-responsibility. And this person is very much in their ego and their pride. Sorry if I keep sipping on the coffee. It's been a long day. Um, yeah, I don't see communication. Um, if anything, I feel like if you are dealing with a person that was extremely toxic or has a tendency, like whenever they get drunk or whenever they're out with friends, they have a tendency of like te texting you like nasty messages. The reason why they're actually doing that is because one, they don't have options or they're bored and they know that by triggering your anger, you're going to respond to them. So just don't do that, Sagittarius. Like, keep it pushing. This person is very much in low vibration. You don't want to deal with that, um, especially with the Ten of Wands here in regards to how they feel about you. They feel like you're a burden or they feel like 
you were too much to handle. Um, for some of you guys, you could have been dealing with someone that constantly told you that you were hard to love or that you asked for too much or that your boundaries were too much. But it's not that. It's just that this person has a habit, you know, of, Whenever you, whenever they do something and you try to have that conversation like, hey, I don't appreciate how you talked to me that day in front of my family or whatever, somehow they turn it around and make it seem like it's your fault and then you're left to feel like you're in the wrong for trying to express your feelings. Narcissistic energy here, so keep it pushing, Sagittarius. All right, my loves, so moving on here. Let's see what's going on with my Cappies. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Give me three cards for new love. Three cards for old flame. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my Cappies. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Oh. Let's see what's going on with Capricorns. You guys, I'm laughing because I'm a Capricorn. And let me tell you, <laughs> a lot of shit has been popping off. This has been a brutal eclipse season for me. Not only that, but you know, with uh, Chiron being in um, in Aries, being forced to deal with traumas and things from the past that you is it's just been a roller coaster. But anyways, moving on here, we have the Ace of Wands. I'm gonna put it back in the deck. All right, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys listen to my podcast, you guys stay tuned. I will be uploading the new episode on Sunday. And it was a, I did a poll on my Instagram and Snapchat. If you guys don't follow me on there, go follow me on there so you guys can get updates and see what's going on in my crazy life and all that fun stuff. And the poll was, who was the worst Zodiac sign you've ever dated? Your responses were hilarious, okay? So the next episode on the podcast is going to be, I dated all 12 Zodiac signs, so you don't have to. So you guys stay tuned for that. All right, let's see what's going on with Cappies. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. All right. If you guys are new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. All right, we have the Eight of Wands, Seven of Swords, and the Empress. Wow, okay. So immediately, the moment I seen the Eight of Pentacles, for those of you guys dealing with the new connection, I feel like things were going good, and then somehow, and again, keep in mind, we have Mercury in retrograde right now. The moment you started to feel like things were changing, Capricorn, or like they weren't being consistent, I feel that that moment you started to pull back. And the moment they realized that, they started to kind of want to express or want to open up to you about their true feelings, right? The Empress. But you're dealing with the person that has issues letting go of control. It's almost like this person has a tendency of purposely being secretive and it's not other any reason than to make you feel like they are in fact being secretive it's a, a, a mysterious type of energy that they're trying okay they're trying to emulate so what i mean by that is that this person is not that mysterious and this person is not that nonchalant they are purposely acting this way because maybe in the past they've had a tendency of doing that because that's how they get the person to fall for them. So they thought that that would happen with you, Capricorn. But of course, Capricorn's like, nope, that's not going to happen, right? I know my worth. I know what I deserve. And I'm not going to be breadcrumbed. I am not going to deal with none of that fuckery. Eight of Pentacles in reverse is not wanting to put the effort because of the Seven of Swords in reverse. Because I don't want to be honest to the fact that I have feelings for Capricorn. I don't want to make it so easy for Capricorn that they can hurt me. 
basically you're dealing with the person that is emotionally capable of loving you Capricorn but I feel like they are not healed from their past traumas and they're carrying that shit like a badge of honor so what's really happening here in this connection is that for a lot of you Capricorns you caught on to the feeling like I said like they were being sneaky or they weren't being honest and they weren't because they're trying to pretend something they're not they're not that deep they're not that mysterious it's just that they like to come off that way because it's worked in the past, right? But there is still a desire there to want to make it right, right? So I do see them making, taking future actions towards you. I do see them realizing I need to come correct because I'm not letting this one go. I'm not letting Cappy go. So I do see them stepping up, Capricorn. Um, I'm going to be honest and straight to the point. If you have had or still have communication with them, but you find yourself often being the one to have to like text them first, stop doing that. They're doing that on purpose because they want you to be the one to pursue them because they feel like that's how people fall for them. And of course, you're smarter than that, Capricorn. So don't do it. Pull back. Pull back your energy and you'll see how quickly this shit goes from reverse to, right? They're no longer going to be lying to themselves that they don't want to put effort because they know that you're the empress. That you are what they look for in a partner. All right? All right. Moving on here. Past lover. You have the Five of Pentacles in reverse, the Four of Swords, and the Ace of Cups. This person still has feelings for you, Capricorn. Um, this is someone that I feel like the experience of being with you has taught them a massive lesson, and it's kind of like the message that I give to Scorpio. Uh, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Scorpios have a tendency that when they go into relationships or in any type of connection... Um, with a person, when they leave, for good or bad, you will transform them, right? And when I say good or bad, it depends on how they treated you, obviously. So this person is going through a massive transformation of realizing that they had never been loved the way you loved them, Capricorn, or that they had never been treated the way you treated them. And in regards to why they feel this way is because they've been either internalizing or for some of them it's almost like they're kind of being forced to become more spiritual or connect with spirituality so they're being able to see the bigger picture and they're realizing you know what i do in fact still have feelings for capricorn i do love them i just didn't know how to love them so I feel like for a lot of you guys, this person from your past, it's this connection is not over yet. Especially those of you guys that, let's just say there was a breakup and there hasn't been any contact or any communication. Don't think for a second that this person's not coming back around. They are. And the reason why they are taking their time right now is because they're trying to internalize, am I capable of loving Capricorn the way they deserve? Am I capable of giving Capricorn what they want? But ultimately, they're deciding yes, and they're coming towards you. So whether you're ready or not, it's only a matter of time before they reach out to you, Capricorn, and they profess their feelings for you and are willing to be available to you. Maybe they, you know, maybe they tried really hard to be emotionally unavailable to you because they didn't want to get hurt. But they're realizing now, you know what, I do love Capricorn. And by me not opening up, only push me to lose them. So I'm hurting either way. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's a reflection that's going on. There's internalization that's going on. But I do see them coming back around and realizing that it has a lot to do with the fact that they actually fear being left. And it's like their worst fear happened because by them not stepping up, inevitably is what created the distancing in this connection so 
yeah, I feel like this story is not over, Capricorn. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my Aquarius. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. By the way, Aquarius, you guys have a very, very bad rep <laughs> on that poll that I did on Instagram and Snapchat for my next episode on my podcast about I dated all 12 zodiac signs, so you don't have to. People were dragging you guys. <laughs> Which I found very amusing because as a Capricorn, myself, with my moon in Aquarius, I found it very interesting that a lot of people really were dragging you guys. I have tons of Aquarian friends. Um, I just adore you guys. You guys are my type of people. <laughs> But apparently you're not other people's types. <laughs> Either that or you really hurt them. <laughs> Anyways, you guys stay tuned for that episode coming to you guys on Sunday. All right, let's see what's going on with Aquarius. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards for new love. Three cards for old flame. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with you guys and in your love life. All right, here we go. We have the Four of Wands, the Five of Pentacles in reverse, and the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, so what I'm seeing here in regards to new love for you guys, um, you were dealing with the person that really seen a future with you, Aquarius, but your non-emotional personality scared them and it's it's almost like there is or something held them back in regards to fully opening up to you and I feel like for a lot of you guys it has a lot to do with the fact of maybe they have been accustomed to dealing with people that were like overly obsessive about them or perhaps they were used to being the you know, the, the one being chased. Um, and I feel like this person had difficulty trying to figure you out, Aquarius. However, if you felt like lately they've been pulling back or they haven't been as present in the connection, that's going to be changing. And the reason for that is, again, with the Five of Pentacles in reverse, it's almost like, a feeling of I I wanted something stable with Aquarius, but I don't think Aquarius is capable of giving me that. Or I it, it's almost like not wanting to push you, not wanting to force you into anything that you don't want to do uh, or that you're not capable of doing. And it's not to say that you're not. It's just that's their assumption of you. But with the Wheel of Fortune, they're realizing, you know what, I'm going to take a chance at like, or like, I'm going to take a chance at life, and I'm just going to throw myself out there and tell Aquarius exactly where I'm coming from and what their plans are. So there is definitely a powwow that's going to be happening with you guys, where, like I said, if they've been a bit distant or have been not present in the connection, um, they're coming back around and they're going to lay the cards on the table. They're going to tell you exactly where they see this connection going, where they want it to go. And if you're willing to jump on it and give each other the opportunity. And I'm going to be honest, I feel like for a lot of you guys, you may actually be internalizing wanting commitments or wanting marriage or something that is in connection with feeling like time is fleeting right now. So there is almost like for some of you guys, I even see you guys like looking at like, um, like getting like, uh, getting wills done or, uh, getting life insurance, uh, something that is in connection with time being fleeting or how vulnerable we actually are. And it's like, I don't want to waste a moment or I don't want to, you know, let myself be held back from my fears. So I see you guys like really thinking about stuff like that and thinking like more long term. And this person is coming back at you guys with 
this is what I this is where what I see happening Aquarius this is what I want from you this is what I want from the relationship this is where I see it going can we be on the same page and I feel like for a lot of you guys it may be scary at first but my advice is fully embrace this connection if you feel it strong um, because I feel like for some of you guys, you're holding back out of fear, whether you're aware of it or not. I see it more on a subconscious level. Um, give yourself the opportunity, Aquarius. By the way, for those of you guys that are single, single and not dealing with anyone, if you get any type of invitation, any type of, you know, to go to a social outing, do not hold back. Even if it's a guy that's inviting you and you're a girl or if you're a guy and a girl's inviting you and they're not your type, don't be quick to say no or to be dismissive because chances are they may not be for you, but you may be at the right time and the right place that the right person comes along for you guys. Okay, so heed that warning, my loves. <laughs> All right, in regards to person from the past, we have the King of Swords here, the Three of Swords, and the Judgment. All in reverse. Okay, so... This person is still healing from the separation or the breakup. However, I feel like this person is very much, you could have been dealing with the person or your ex could have been very narcissistic and very malicious in their way of expressing. I feel like their way of expressing is what creates a lot of pain. Um, so they are the type that could be like petty, petty. Um, and I feel like there is almost an internalization that's going on with them where they're realizing, you know what, yeah, maybe... I had a lot to do with the reason why this ended. So I do see them trying to come back around. They're refusing. Um, they're refusing to accept the ending of this relationship. But I feel like for a lot of you guys, you were in fact dealing with the person that was narcissistic. My advice is like it's not even worth it to be honest with you guys. Um, they're trying to heal from it, but they're still refusing to... They're still refusing to accept that they had a lot to do with the separation or the breakup. Even if, for some of you guys, even if they were the ones that cheated in this relationship, like they're not seeing what they did was wrong. Um, and for some, you could be dealing with someone that try, even if they did cheat, like they reversed that shit on you and they try to make you feel like, well, you know, you weren't giving me attention or you weren't being very physical with me or whatever the, the case may be. It's like they are kind of trying to wash their hands clean from it. Um, I do see them trying to reach out to you, but I see it happening more so towards September. Um, but again, my advice is just keep it pushing. This is definitely not good energy at all. Okay. Moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Aries. Aries, Sun, Moon. Oh, I almost skipped Pisces again. You see, I caught that Pisces. <laughs> My Pisces followers and subscribers were so upset at me uh, since that last video where I accidentally skipped Pisces. And then I went on my TikTok and I did readings for all the signs. And I, again, skipped Pisces. And they were so pissed. They were like, you don't like Pisces. <laughs> I adore Pisces. I have a mother that's a Pisces. I have a sister that is a Pisces. I have a lot of Pisces in my life, actually. So, I almost skipped you, Pisces. <laughs> All right. Let's see what's going on with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with you guys. Give me three cards for new love. Three cards for old flame. Let's see what's going on with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. That's so funny, you guys. I almost skipped Pisces again. <laughs> y'all would really come for me <laughs> it's the placement that i have pisces my communication and obviously we have saturn there and yeah it's been a bonkers all right let's see what's going on with pisces sun moon raising venus here we go pisces let's see what's going on with you guys oh all right here we go pisces we have the Six of Cups, the Ace of Wands, and the Queen of Cups. Okay, so you're dealing with the person that really sees potential in this connection, Pisces. I feel like they are very drawn to you. Um, it could be someone that you know from the past. 
especially those of you guys that recently linked up with someone from your past or someone you knew um there is a desire to want to revisit the connection however all right this is only for those of you guys that recently are dealing with someone that was from your past like an old flame or something i feel like there is more hype into the thought of what have what could have been that kind of pushed you towards this connection but you're quickly realizing that you guys are kind of not on the same page or that that person obviously has changed with time and you are no longer the old version of yourself. So it's almost like a realizing a bit of feeling a bit disappointed because it was starting really, it was very exciting, you know, thinking about the past, reminiscing about the past and thinking of the future. But the more you kind of reconnect, it's almost a feeling of like, ah, it wasn't what I thought or it wasn't what I was expecting. And I feel this has more to do on your side, Pisces. Now, for others of you, um, yeah, I feel like this connection is definitely someone that is wanting to put effort towards this connection. I feel like they're really, you know, coming towards you or putting the effort that is necessary. However, you're coming up as a queen of cups in reverse, Pisces. For some of you guys, it could be more so to do with the fact that you guys have Saturn in your energy right now. Um, so it's almost like you're looking at things more meticulously. You are really paying attention to people's effort. Um, and I feel like this person is feeling like they don't necessarily know where you stand in this connection. Um, for some of you guys, you could be disassociating even. Um, but I feel like it has more to do with the fact that you have Saturn and Neptune in your sign right now. Um, so it's almost like... Think of it as like dreamy and aspiring to the future, but at the same time, Saturn is there and it's like, well, the clock is ticking, uh, ticking, <laughs> the clock is ticking. Are we being, you know, a bit delulu or are we making decisions based on actual facts and what's actually unfolding? So I feel like more than anything, Pisces, you're a bit in your head right now. Okay. You guys are overthinking and overanalyzing. Don't let that psych you out. It's okay to feel like you're being very attentive towards this person's you know efforts because obviously that's very important when it comes to relationships and connections that's how you know that they're going to be consistent right um so there's nothing wrong with that but i feel like for a lot of you guys you're overdoing it to the point where you are kind of disassociating you're like separating yourself from what's actually happening because you're so fixated on like being laser focused um try the best to kind of be present Pisces because I do feel like this is a beautiful connection I just feel like you guys are kind of struggling right now emotional wise um to process the things that are happening because your mind is very much active right now uh whereas you guys are usually kind of more towards your heart chakra um and right now it kind of feels a little bit foreign because you're overthinking over analyzing and that's kind of throwing you off um i would highly advise you guys to go towards water or anywhere the beach the ocean the lake anywhere where or even in your home in the bathtub run yourself a bath uh to really ground yourself and ground your energy because i feel like you guys are a little bit feeling a little bit disconnected um i do see a beautiful connection here but again, I feel like you guys are overthinking or overanalyzing or maybe even seeing this person through a very critical eye right now. Um, and you don't want to kind of hinder this connection if you are too much in your head, okay? All right, my loves. Let's see what's going on with your past person. Well, definitely this person is not ready to let go of you, Pisces. We have the death card in reverse, the refusal of the ending of this connection. Um, how they feel about you, they're refusing that you're no longer theirs. <laughs> and that came on very strong. Um, they're refusing to let you move on more than anything. So I do feel like there's going to be communication. That's if it hasn't happened already. I do see them coming back around and trying to contact you, trying to basically come back into your life. Um, with the two of wands though, I do feel like they are they are missing you pisces but the thing here is that i feel for those of you guys that have dealt with this person in the past and you guys have 
broken up and went back with each other and it's almost like a cycle or a habit you have to surpass this this habit you've outgrown this this is only for those of you guys like i said that you have a tendency of breaking up and going back with that person you've outgrown the situation and i feel like the reason why they keep coming back is because you keep either forgiving them or you keep accepting their bare minimum they're not consistent and at this point in time the death card in reverse it's time that we accept that it is the ending or that it is not the person for you because this person is going to come back in as many times as they feel like you're going to keep taking them back it's like they're not getting off their high horse they're going to keep doing what they're doing because they are confident in themselves that you're going to continuously keep accepting them or keep taking them back. So my advice is if you are dealing with that energy, keep, keep it pushing. It's time to break that link, break that habit. It's toxic. All right. All right, my loves. Moving on here. Let's see what's going on with <laughs> finally Aries. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Aries. If you guys are interested in any personal services, any readings or spell work, you can find all of that on the description box below. If you guys don't follow my other social medias, I highly encourage you guys to do so. We can connect on there. Let's see what's going on with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. Let's see what's going on with Aries. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. You guys hit that notification bell so you guys can get notified if the most recent video is going up. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Aries. How are my Aries doing? How are you guys doing, you guys? All right, we have the Nine of Cups. We have the Ace of Cups in reverse, and we have the Three of Pentacles here. Okay, so in regards to how this new person is seeing you, they are seeing you as the person that they always wanted. They are certain that you have all the qualities all the traits of the person or partner that they've been searching for. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky in regards to how they feel about you. They are a bit confused right now about what they feel for you. For some of you guys, it's because you've made it clear um, what you're wanting from this connection. So I feel like this person has been working on themselves. You could have met this person very unexpectedly. For some of you guys, you could have even reconnected with a person from your past that it's almost like the universe kind of conspired to bring you guys together, right? And it's like in the past, especially if you did deal with someone from the past, in the past, they often thought about you. They often wanted to see like whatever happened with you. So you guys gave it a go. You guys have an opportunity here. And now it's like they're unsure if they are ready to commit. But what I'm hearing is the reason for this is not because there's no feelings there. I'm going to be honest. There's obviously feelings here with the Nine of Cups. They're scared. That's what it is. They're scared. This is a person that maybe has a tendency of like not being emotionally available. Or you could be dealing with someone that has a tendency of only having superficial connections. So we're talking about like physical connections. We're talking about booty calls. We're talking about fleeting things, you know, something very exciting, but it's fleeting. Um, this is a person that, and I don't feel like it's a negative thing, Aries. I feel like the reason for it is, because they kind of had to force themselves to be that way so that they won't hurt or so that they could get over the trauma that they experienced in the past. And it's like now they don't know how to switch it back on. And then you came along and the switch went on. And that's what's scaring them. That's where they're like, wait, hold up. 
you know, this is too much. You know, why am I experiencing jealousy? Why am I like I'm seeing I'm seeing other people react to you, maybe give you attention and and their reaction is to try to be nonchalant about it. But they're really in your in their feelings. And in their feelings, they're realizing, holy shit, I think I'm actually having feelings for Aries. And that's what's scaring them. However, I do see that their future actions, three of pentacles, they're going to come right out and tell you, yes, I do have feelings for you, Aries. What do we go from? What do we do? What do we go from here? How can we be on the same page? I feel like you guys are going to have a conversation about how you want to proceed now for very little of you. If you started this connection on a physical level and you guys were not wanting any type of relationship or anything serious, I feel like it happened, like you guys started to grow feelings for each other in a very unexpected way. So you both started kind of acting weird towards each other because you guys were in fact having feelings. And it's like the big elephant in the room, but you guys are refusing to address it. And that's why it feels like it's very much a bit confusing right now. But I feel like you guys will be having that conversation and you will be able to get on the same page and realize that you guys actually do want to put effort towards this connection. All right. All right, Aries, let's see what's going on with your past lover or your past fling. Interesting. Two major arcanas. We have the world card here, the magician in reverse, both on in reverse, and the two of swords. So this person, um, you could have been dealing with the person that was non-committal, or a person that was definitely not looking for anything serious or long term. This could have been the type of person that sold you a dream, Aries. It's almost like they said everything that you ever wanted to hear. They pretended to be everything that you ever wanted, right? But this person was non-committal. This person was blocked. They're emotionally blocked. This is a person that was not looking for anything serious. They're still not looking for anything serious. I do not see their future actions. I don't see them coming towards you. I feel like both of you guys are very aware that you guys kind of are better off without each other. Um, it's like if you've been holding on to this person or wanting to hear from them, hoping that they're going to change Aries, they're not going to change. This is a person that is just not ready for any type of commitment. Um, you being as intense and passionate it would only be devastating for you to continue to allow this person to come back into your life um, with them continuously keep letting you down. So my advice is just keep it pushing. I don't see them taking future action towards you. However, because we do have two major arcanas in reverse, um, the chances of them coming upright are obviously uh, highlighted here. So if they do, in fact, come back around, I don't see it happening, at least not in the next two months, but for some of you guys, it could be like a little bit after that. For some of you guys, it could be that you hear from them like around winter time. Um, my advice is just don't let them back in because I feel like they're just not ready and not willing to give you what you're looking for, Aries. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with... Taurus. Let's see what's going on with my lovely Taurus. Taurus, I've been raising Venus. Let's see what's going on with you guys. What is going on with Taurus? Taurus, I've been raising Venus. Give me three cards for new love. Give me three cards for old flame here. For Taurus, I've been raising Venus. What's going on with Taurus? Taurus, I've been raising Venus. Let's see what's going on. Oh. Cards flying out. All right. Let's see what's going on with Taurus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys are new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. Let's see what's going on with Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. 
Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Taurus. Let's see what's going on with you guys. Okay. Let's see what is up with you. Three of Pentacles, the Ace of Swords, and the Ten of Wands. Okay. So they definitely see you as wanting or a person that they're willing to put in the work. Um, with the Ace of Swords, though, in regards to how they feel about you, I feel like for some of you guys, you're experiencing a bit of stress or feeling like you don't necessarily know where you stand with this person right now. Um, but with the Three of Pentacles here and the Ace of Swords, I feel like they will be revealing to you or you guys will be having a conversation in regards to them professing their true feelings towards you, Taurus. Um, for some of you guys, it could be that you're dealing with the person that works. Uh, maybe they have... Okay, so I'm getting for some of you guys, if you are in fact dealing with the person that works with you and you guys like flirt back and forth or whatever, but it never really picks up. The reason for it is because this person is scared that it's going to interfere or that it's going to affect the connection and the environment at work. However, I feel like this is weighing really heavy on them. So they will be professing to you or they will be talking to you about their true connection, what they really feel for you, but also being clear and concise about certain like rules <laughs> to follow or to try to follow. Um, now, this is just for some of you. Now, for others of you, like I said, I do feel like if this person has been a little bit distant or perhaps you guys just seem to like not, it almost feels like you guys are walking on eggshells from each other, like in regards to expressing your emotions or feelings. Uh, could be murky or retrograde, you know, that's happening right now. But I feel like for the majority of you, there is a conversation that is coming up where they will be expressing fully what their intentions are and what they want from this relationship. And the reason for it is because I feel like the lack of communication, the lack of communication and the lack of being on the same page is really creating a lot of like stress or anxiety on this person. That could be the reason why they're holding back a bit right now. But I do see them coming back around or opening communication and conversation about, all right, Taurus, like, let's get to the bottom of this. Like, what's really going on? What's really bothering you? Um, and then you're going to be, you're going to feel free to actually express what's been bothering. Um, and then you guys will be able to address that and keep it pushing and make it work or at least try to be on the same page. But I feel like right now, <laughs> they are showing me like you guys walking on eggshells are a bit difficult for communication with you guys, but I do feel like it gets better uh, as the month goes on, Taurus. All right, in regards to your old flame, we have the King of Swords, the Star card in reverse, and the Ace of Wands. So this person from your past um could have a tendency of making it seem like everything is perfect everything is going amazing in their life or you could be idolizing you know like looking at them from a distance saying damn they have their life together things are going well for them like what's going on like i'm over here you know there's not a lot of passion there's not a lot of excitement going on in my life it is a facade Taurus. It is a facade. This person is, you know, with the star card in reverse, they are dealing with a situation where they feel like they just don't have an out. They just don't have uh, a way out of this situation. And it's like they're forcing themselves to stay or remain in that situation. With the ace of wands in reverse, the passion has gone. So for some of you guys, you could have been dealing with someone that left your relationship to be with someone else. And it turns out that it wasn't, you know, the grass was not greener on the other side. I feel like, like I said, I feel like there's a, there's this really strong need to pretend. Okay. This person really, it's giving me very much the energy of like a person that puts on social media or that is often or constantly announcing like great things that are happening in their life. And though it may actually be happening doesn't mean that they're happy. It doesn't mean that they're fulfilled. It doesn't mean that they are living in their truth. Because I see this person, like I said, almost having to create a facade 
to cover the unhappiness that they really feel. Especially for those of you guys that this person walked away from you to be somewhere else. It's like it wasn't what they thought it would be. They're disappointed, but of course they're not going to come and tell you, Taurus. So my advice is I don't see any type of communication or future actions of them taking towards you. But my advice is if you do at some point feel like, you know, this person really did me dirty, like how can, you know, karma not be teaching them a lesson? Listen, at the end of the day, karma comes to everyone, right? Uh, it's the, the law of cause and effect. But the thing is that we are the ones that create our own karma by what we accept or by what we... Basically, if you go against your morals, whatever your morals are, if you go against that, then you feel guilt. And if you feel guilt, you start to punish yourself and the universe just is going to respond to that by giving you experiences that make you feel like you are, in fact, being punished. So what I'm saying is this usually happens with narcissistic people. Narcissistic people do not believe, they do not see in their head, they cannot comprehend that what they do is bad. So they could go on for years with your assumption that they're thriving, but sooner than later, karma is going to come knocking on their door. Do you get what I'm saying? So don't compare yourself, Taurus, or don't look to them thinking that, their life is amazing because you're only seeing it from what they're showing you, what they're allowing you to see. They're not see they're not showing you their depression and their unhappiness and the fact that they don't feel passionate about what they were so passionate about that it could have been to the point that it jeopardized your relationship. Do you get what I'm saying? So heavy message there, Taurus. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Gemini. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Gemini. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards for new love. Three cards for old flame. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising. Oh. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my Gemini. By the way, Gemini, how are you guys holding up? Because y'all are going through a lot of changes, a lot of transformations as well, and more to come, by the way. All the way to September, probably, for some of you guys. October, November. All right. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. If you guys are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. I have another video coming up for you guys, another reading. That is how they feel about you. So you guys stay tuned for that. All right, I'm going to put these back in. See what's going on with Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oh, I think I've seen a card flip. No? Okay. All right, three cards, new love, three cards, old flame for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go, Gemini. Let's see what's going on with my Gemini's. By the way, Gemini, you're another sign that has a very bad reputation when it comes to love. <laughs> Which I found very amusing because a lot of signs that people don't like or just can't get along are the ones I adore. <laughs> All right. So we have the Eight of Swords, the Page of Pentacles, and the Empress here in regards to new love. So... This person is seeing you as stubborn as hell, Gemini. They feel like for some of you guys, you could be dealing with someone that is extremely physically attracted to you, like extremely so much that they have been willing to overlook certain red flags that you've shown. <laughs> Keep in mind, it is a general reading. So for some of you guys, it could be vice versa. It could be you ignoring the red flags because this person is hot. Okay. But with the page of pentacles right at the center in regards to how they feel about you, they're still not wanting to, like, with the page of pentacles and the empress, I'm going to be honest, I feel like they put so much value and so much importance into the physical connection that 
they, I don't know how to describe it. It's almost like, like they overlook certain things about you or perhaps they overlook the fact that you guys don't have a lot of things in common. Maybe they even pretend to have certain things in common with you just because they're so physically attracted to you. But I feel like looks can only take you so far. And I don't mean this to you, Gemini. I feel like this has more to do with that person. What I mean is, like, think of it this way. This person is pretending to be everything you could ever want in a partner, but it's just an empty shell because they are not that who they show themselves to be. And the reason why they do this is because for some of you guys, it could be that they're just trying to take you to bed. For others of you, it could be that they, you know, they see almost like wanting to conquer you. So their future actions is, yes, they're going to continue pursuing you, even if you feel like this connection is not going anywhere, Gemini. My advice is, I mean, if you're looking for something casual or physical, by all means, go for it. You guys already know. You know, we don't shame on this channel. <laughs> if anything, I encourage you guys to embrace your dark side, right? It's about balance. And whatever you try to suppress will consume you. So if you're looking for something casual or if you're looking for something physical, by all means, go for it. But don't get clinged up on this person that is emotionally unavailable and that is only pretending to be something that you'll like so that you can continue dealing with them. And then Geminis, you guys also need to understand if a person cannot mentally and intellectually keep you on your toes, so to speak, you're going to lose interest as well. So if you are the one that sees this person as very attractive and you're kind of overseeing or overlooking red flags, you're going to get tired of it. So I feel like this connection is just not good for you, honestly. All right, in regards to the person from your past, we have the Page of Swords, the Chariot, and the Four of Wands here. Okay. So this person is definitely watching you on social media. If you are on social media, they're watching everything you're posting um, in regards to, you know, why they feel this way with the chariot in reverse. In reverse. I feel like this person is not willing to let go of this connection, Gemini, but I feel like it has more to do with the fact that they feel or they felt at some point that they had control over you. So for some of you guys, this could be like, even if you've been separated from your ex for like two years or something like that. Um, and there is like, you do have children or there's children involved. I feel like they try to manipulate you and you prefer to agree just to be amicable towards each other. But I feel like you're working on yourself or you've been working on Maybe some of you guys recently started putting yourself out there in the dating scene. Um, and it's becoming an inconvenience to this person. Now, for others of you, it could be that you are, in fact, seeing someone or dating someone. And it's, again, your relationship has become an inconvenience. And it's kind of like the scenario of when you're co-parenting and the one of, you know, your ex starts to date and then you're left to deal with them having to move on and stuff and you're still trying to co-parent. It's one thing for them to be accustomed to the fact that you're single or that you're not dealing with anyone because you're always trying to work like around their schedule or whatever just, just so you guys could be on good terms, you know, for the children. But then it's a different scenario when you do in fact get yourself in a relationship because now you're not going to be as agreeable because now you expect them to be the one to step up and to work around your schedule. And that's something they're not willing to do because they're offended at the fact that you're moving on. Do you get what I'm saying? So what I'm seeing here is there is a bit of discomfort here because they feel like they don't have control over you anymore or they feel like you could have moved on from them. Whatever the scenario is here, I feel like this person is going to be like taking action towards you or wanting to reach out to you, wanting to see if you guys can fix it. But I feel, again, 
it's almost like they're seeing that they no longer have control over you and that's what's really triggering them. That's what's really pushing them to reach out and want to see if you would basically still take them back. Um, especially if you were dealing with the next partner that was, you know, a bit of a bitch or a bit of an asshole um, where they were like, you know, they thought they were God's gift to earth, you know, and then they realize, well, Gemini is kind of moving on and it's kind of like an eagle slap to them. So it's like, you know what, I'm going to see if I still have this type of effect or this type of control over Gemini. And I don't see you actually falling for that. If you are hoping for an ex to come back, just be careful, Gemini, because I feel like the reason why they're doing this is just to prove to themselves that they can get you back. All right. All right, my loves. Moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Cancer. Let's see what's going on with Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Cancers. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Cancer. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Cancer. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Three cards for new love. Three cards for old flame. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Cancers. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Three cards for new love. Three cards for old flame. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Cancer. Let's see what's going on with you guys. All right. New love. We have the Eight of Swords. The Three of Swords. So sorry, the Three of Wands. The Nine of Swords. Okay. So what I'm seeing here, Cancer, is for a lot of you guys, there was a situation where you felt like you guys have hit an obstacle and it almost feels like you guys can't overcome that or there is a bit of frustration. However... With the Eight of Swords, you're realizing that this person was probably playing a lot of mind games. Um, this person does have a tendency of playing a lot of mind games. I feel like even if they were giving you all the attention, right, in the beginning of the connection, giving you all the attention and like trying to show themselves to be the perfect guy or the perfect girl for you, they started to pull back. And the moment they started to pull back, I feel like you started to chase. You started to stress. You started to worry. You started to freak out. And this is a person that has a history. This is a person that has a history of playing mind games to create. Uh, it's giving me very much the energy of like love bombing. So they come in hot and heavy and then they start to pull back. And then you start to freak out and you start to chase them or you start to try to prove to your to them that you're worthy by overdoing or putting up with shit that you shouldn't be putting up with. Um, but this is a person that definitely plays the manipulation tactics uh, to have you be the one to chase them. OK, now in regards to how they feel about you with the three of wands in reverse, uh, this is a person that, like I said, they have a habit of playing mind games with people. Um, think of it this way. When a person comes to you and they love bomb you, what they're doing is, a, in fact, a manip manipulation tactic to make you fall, right? Think of it as like when you're first falling in love with someone, like you see them in this perfect light and... It's almost like everything is just so beautiful and perfect, right? And they're literally pretending to be exactly that. And then the moment they start to pull back or the moment they ghost you, what happens is that your brain gets triggered. Think of it as like when you grown, you know, addicted to sugar, right? And then what happens when you get off the sugar? You get horrible headaches. You start to, right? It takes a while for your body to, you know, um... It takes a, a while for your body to detox. So you are, the love bombing is a manipulation tactic to have you feel like you're constantly in that energy or feeling of like falling in love with someone. And then the moment they go ghost or they, you know, completely fall off the map or they pull back, 
what's going to happen is that your brain is triggered and you're no longer trying to screen or trying to figure out if you in fact do like this person. Your mind is telling you you love this person because you're constantly wanting to chase the validation that this person gave you from the very beginning. And this is how narcissists, this is how people that have a tendency of manipulating other people, this is what they do, right? To keep you coming back. Meaning whenever they go ghost and they go about and do their options, they come back around and you keep putting up with it because it's a constant, like a constant roller coaster that is mentally fucking you. And what's really happening is that you're constantly seeking their validation. So... I feel like you're dealing with that type of energy. My advice is definitely keep it pushing. This is a person that's going to have you literally feeling like you're going through a roller coaster. And yes, sometimes it's thrilling, but it's extremely toxic to the point where you become emotionally, physically, and mentally exhausted. And you, why would you want to deal with that? Keep it pushing, Cancer. All right, in regards to your old love here, we have, wow, we have all cards in reverse. We have the lover's card, the king of wands, and the high priestess. So for some of you guys, you're dealing with a person that, again, you have a tendency of like going back with or dealing with, or you're, for some of you guys, you want to fix the relationship, but it's almost like every time they come back around, you're quickly to jump into bed with them, allow them to use your body, basically, um, knowing deep down that this person is not going to change. They're not changing. They're not wanting to change. You're refusing to pay attention to your intuition that's telling you it doesn't feel right because it's not right. And it is a cycle. It is a habit. Um, especially with the King of Wands, you're definitely dealing with the fuck boy energy or fuck girl energy, a person that loves to play multiple players or that likes to play the field um whenever they have new options they go chase those new options whenever you know they grow bored of it they're quickly uh coming back to you trying to seek your validation um because it's like an ego stroke to them again i feel like you're refusing to see a certain trait or a certain habit cancer what spirit is telling you is in order for you to be able to find the balance when it comes to relationships and partnerships, you have to be paying attention to consistency and listening to your intuition. You're refusing to do so. Then put yourself in predicaments or put yourself in positions of allowing people that are unworthy to hurt you. And then you ask the universe or you ask God or you ask your angels why do I keep dealing with this? The reason why you keep dealing with it is because you keep allowing these people to continuously keep using you. Now, the word use is coming on very strong. So this could be different aspects. It could be that they're using you physically. It could be that financially you're their resource, meaning whenever they're struggling, they know that you're always going to have their back and you help them out and they take advantage of that. For others of you, it could just be the fact that you are kind of handing to them on a silver platter all your love and devotion to them. And that's great when it's reciprocated cancer. But when it's not, you need to understand, even if you've convinced yourself, for example, right, with the lovers in reverse, the king of wands in reverse and the high priestess in reverse, what this is saying is that it's almost a situation where you know that they just want a physical connection and you're convincing yourself, well, at least I'm getting it too. But in reality, you're not being honest with yourself because you're expecting or wanting more or hoping for more. So you're in essence kind of setting yourself up for failure. Do you get what I'm saying? So my advice, if you keep dealing with this, it's going to be a never ending cycle. And I feel like at this point, you've already outgrown this cancer. You deserve so much better than that, my love. So shut the door on this bullshit. All right, my loves. I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. If you did, let me know. Comment below. Let me know. And I will keep them coming to you guys. I will see you guys soon. Till then, bye.